Gymnosperms and Angiosperms Gymnosperms The gymnosperms are called naked seeded plants because the ovules are not enclosed by any ovary wall and they remain exposed both before and after fertilization. The seeds that are formed post fertilization are naked. Gymnosperms include shrubs, medium sized trees or tall trees. The giant redwood tree, Sequoia, which is a gymnosperm, is one of the tallest tree species. The roots of gymnosperms are generally tap roots. In some genera, roots have fungal association in the form of mycorrhiza, example Pinus. In some others, nitrogen-fixing cyanobacteria are associated in small specialized roots called coralloid roots, example cycas. The stems of some gymnosperms are unbranched, example cycas, or branched, example pinus, cedrus, while the leaves are simple or compound. The pinnate leaves in cycas persist for a few years. In gymnosperms, the leaves are well adapted to withstand wind, humidity and extremes of temperature. The needle-like leaves in conifers reduce the surface area and the water loss is reduced by the thick cuticle and sunken stomata of the leaves. The gymnosperms produce haploid microspores and megaspores and are hence heterosporous. Sporangia that are borne on sporophylls produce two kinds of spores. The sporophylls are arranged spirally along an axis to form lacs or cones or compact strobili. The male strobili bearing microsporangia and microsporophylls are called microsporangiate. The male gametophytic generation developed from microspores. They are highly reduced and is confined to only a limited number of cells. The pollen grain is a reduced gametophyte. Within the microsporangia, the development of pollen grains take place. The megasporangia or the cones bearing megasporophylls with ovules are called female strobili or macrosporangiate. The strobili or the male or female cones may be born on different trees, example cycas, or on the same tree, example pinus. From one of the cells of the nucellus, the megaspore mother cell is differentiated. The envelopes protect the nucellus and this structure is called an ovule. The ovules develop on the megasporophylls which are clustered to form the female cones. Four megaspores are formed when the megaspore mother cell divides meiotically. One of the megaspores thus formed and enclosed within the megasporangium grows into a multicellular female gametophyte. This female gametophyte bears two or more female sex organs or archegonia. Within the megasporangium, the multicellular female gametophyte is retained. The male and the female gametophytes in gymnosperms do not have an independent free living existence unlike bryophytes and pteridophytes. The gametophytes remain within the sporangia and are retained on the sporophytes. From the microsporangium, the pollen grains is released. The pollen grains come in contact with the opening of the ovules borne on megasporophylls as they are carried in air currents. The male gametes are carried in the pollen tube. The pollen tube grows towards archegonia in the ovules and their contents are discharged near the mouth of the archegonia. After fertilization, the embryo is formed from the zygote and the ovules develop into seeds and the seeds so formed are not covered. Angiosperms In the gymnosperms, the ovules are naked Whereas in the flowering plants or angiosperms, specialized structures called flowers bear the pollen grains and ovules. The seeds are present inside the fruits in angiosperms. The angiosperms include large group of plants growing in various habitats. They range in size from tall trees of eucalyptus which grow over 100 meters tall to a tiny almost microscopic plant, wolfia. 
they provide us with several other commercially important products other than fodder, food, fuel and medicines. Angiosperms are divided into two classes, the monocotyledons and the dicotyledons. The monocotyledons are characterized by having only one cotyledon while the dicotyledons have two cotyledons in their seeds. The stamen is the male sex organ in a flower. The stamens have a slender filament and the tip consists of an anther. The pollen grains are produced within anthers following meiosis. The pistil or the carpel is a female sex organ in a flower. An ovary is present in the pistil enclosing one to many ovules. Highly reduced female gametophytes called embryo sacs are present within ovules. Before meiosis, the embryo sac formation takes place due to which every cell of an embryo sac is haploid. The three-celled egg apparatus is present in each embryo sac, one egg cell, two synergids, three antipodal cells and two polar nuclei. A diploid secondary nucleus is produced by the fusion of the polar nuclei. Pollen grain are, are carried by wind or various other agencies to the stigma of a pistil after dispersal from the anthers. This is called pollination. On the stigma, the pollen grains germinate to produce pollen tubes and these pollen tubes reach the ovule by growing through tissues of stigma and style. The embryo sac receives the pollen tubes where two male gametes are discharged. A zygote is formed when one of the male gametes fuses with the egg cell and is called syngamy. The triploid primary endosperm nucleus, PEN, is formed when the other male gamete fuses with the diploid secondary nucleus. This event is termed as double fertilization because of the involvement of two fusions, which is an event unique to angiosperms. An embryo is formed from the zygote with one or two cotyledons and then endosperm is formed from PEN and the developing embryo receives nourishment from the endosperm. After fertilization, the synergids and the antiporals degenerate. During these events, the ovaries develop into fruit and the ovules develop into seeds. Plant life cycle and alternation of generations. Haploid and diploid cells can divide by mitosis in plants. This ability of the haploid and diploid cells to divide by mitosis leads to the formation of different plant bodies. The gametes are produced by mitosis by the haploid plant body and this plant body is called a gametophyte. Following fertilization, a diploid sporophytic plant body is produced from the zygote which divides by mitosis. This plant body produces haploid spores by meiosis. Once again, these in turn form a haploid plant body dividing by mitosis. There is an alternation of generations between gamete producing haploid gametophyte and spore producing diploid sporophyte during the life cycle of any sexually reproducing plant. The different plant groups and the individuals representing them differ in the following patterns. One, they there is only one celled zygote in the sporophyte generation and the free living sporophytes are absent. Haploid spores are formed when the zygote undergoes meiosis. The gametophyte is formed when the haploid spores divide mitotically. In such plants, the dominant photosynthetic phase is the free living gametophyte. This type of a life cycle is called as haplontic. Many algae that represent this pattern are wallwalks, spirogyra, and some species of chlamydomonas. 2. The other type is wherein the diploid sporophyte is a photosynthetic dominant independent phase of the plant. The gametophytic phase consists of a single to few celled haploid gametophyte. This type of a life cycle is called as diplontic. All plants bear that bear seeds such as gymnosperms and angiosperms follow this pattern. 3. An intermediate condition is exhibited by bryophytes and pterodophytes called the haplodiplontic stage in which both the stages are multicellular and free-living. However, they show different dominant phases. 
A haploid gametophyte is represented by a dominant photosynthetic independent thalloid or erect phase. The short-lived multicellular sporophyte alternates with the haploid gametophyte totally or partially and depends on the gametophyte for its anchorage and nutrition. This pattern is represented by all bryophytes. An independent dominant photosynthetic and a vascular plant body is represented by the diploid sporophyte. The diploid sporophyte alternates with saprophytic or autotropic multicellular independent but short-lived haploid gametophyte. This pattern is termed as haplodiplontic life cycle. This pattern is exhibited by all pteridophytes. Usually, most algal genera are haplontic, but some of them, like Polysiphonia, Kelps, Ectocarpus, are haplodiplontic. And Alga fucus exhibits diplontic life cycle. Please share this video with your friends. Leave your comments below and please subscribe to my channel for more content. Click that bell notification that would let you know when a new video is uploaded. Thank you so much for watching.